Hi everyone! I actually filmed uh, two videos and I realized that I didn't switch on my microphone, so that was a little bit annoying. Anyway, I want to share this book with you today. It's called Chromatopia, an illustrated history of color, and it's by David Coles. Um, the photography in this book is remarkable and the, the photographer is Adrian Lander. I have bought uh, a book on a similar subject matter a while ago, which I've done a review on, so let me just grab it. So this book here, The Brilliant History of Colour in Art by Victoria Finlay, and I will link it up here for you to see the review because they are um, similar in the um, context, but um, different layout, different, obviously, style. And um, yeah, so if you want to just compare and see which one works better for you. When I was buying the, the other book that I just showed you, I kind of was expecting something like this. Um, the other book is brilliant. It's really good. I would recommend it as well. But this book, um, the layout, the photography, everything just is in one place. And I found it um, a lot kind of easier to follow and read because of its uh, structure. So you will see here uh, what I mean. So let's look at the contents. So there is the first colors, color in the time of the ancients, color in the classical world, medieval colors, writing inks, dyes, lakes and pinks, mysterious colors, the Explosion of Colours, A Brave New World of Colour and The Science of Modern Colour. So the book is designed in a very contemporary modern way, which I really enjoy. It's very clean. It's very easy to follow. Mostly the wonderful photography is on the left side and then the text on the right. So again, the colours and everything is just absolutely stunning. You can see the photography here. Um, this would make a beautiful coffee table book for sure. Um, so the basics of color. Then we have the breakdown of the blue, purple, red, orange, yellow, green, and that's it. And then the first colors. And again, look at the photography. There is a lot of very interesting uh, photos of the raw materials so for example ochre you get to see what it looks like in the raw form of it and chalk white lamp black etc so there's loads and loads look at this one real gar so there are some pigments this pigment is as deadly as it is beautiful so this must be quite poisonous um and of course, you know, uh, back in the day, very, very long time ago, people didn't know that a lot of pigments were poisonous and a lot of artists would die earlier because they were dealing with these minerals that they were working with, not knowing um, that they were basically impacting their health. And also um, there is such thing as lead white, which, here we go, uh, we know now how very um, poisonous uh, it can be and I have to read about it because I know that's um, what it sort of was used in the makeup very, very long time ago. It was uh, a representation of the social status, so the whiter the skin was painted, the more uh, wealthy it was thought um, that the person was and so that representation of the the skin color that was painted on um, at that time people didn't know that it actually was poisonous and they were poisoning themselves uh, through skin by by adding this uh, poison and yeah so things like that um, are quite interesting the knowledge that we have now and obviously the knowledge wasn't uh, there a very long time ago so you can see malachite how um, these tones look in their very natural state 
before they're being um, processed into pigments. Here is azuride, and um, there's certain things that I've never heard about. So, for example, Crisa Cola. This looks just absolutely stunning, whatever it is. It's got a multitude of colors, just amazing to the eye. Um, and it says here, this turquoise blue mineral was known from ancient Egypt onwards. So it's a certain type of a turquoise. Um, the, the book will introduce you to things that you haven't heard about for sure, like there will be certainly a couple of things that you haven't heard about, unless you you know everything about everything. Um, then there is this one here, which is called Dragon's Blood. Dragon's Blood was carried in ships from Yemen to Egypt, which is really interesting because um, I actually was living in Yemen for three years when I was little, uh, but that's a long story. Um, so yeah, there is uh, this, uh, what looks like a fruit, um, and I guess that's where the color or the pigment came from. So like I said, you will learn certain things that you didn't know, you will, um, you know, maybe uh, find out um, certain pigments that you didn't know about or how they were created. So the fact that there is sort of a similar amount of information every page makes it very easy to read something um, quite quickly. So you can either find a certain pigment that you're interested in, or you can just sort of read it as you wish. And you don't get bored because it's not, you know, a four full pages of some information. It's very concise and for me that makes it a really pleasurable um, pleasurable uh, read. There is Indian yellow which is like my favorite color for yellow. For years the ingredients of Indian yellow were a mystery and it looks like a mango was dried up until it was sort of rock hard and that seems to be how the pigment was made. So I'm looking forward to reading all of this um, and of course the beautiful photography and almost on every page makes it really enjoyable to look at and specifically the style of photography, very modern, very contemporary, very artistic. Absolutely love it. So this is something that you'd find like on Jackson's art and their sort of um, style but yeah very very beautiful and there you go there's also some pieces of art repre representing some of the colors so i hope you found this quite useful and thanks for watching see you soon